in the last class uh, we had seen what is specific impulse, what is vacuum specific impulse and density impulse and how C f varies with uh, P c by P e and A e by A t. We also uh, noted at the end of the last class that thrust varies with altitude for a rocket motor. Let us look at how it varies with altitude and what we can do to derive some benefit out of it. Suppose I were to plot the sea level thrust, thrust at any altitude versus sea level thrust Uh, wherein if we plot uh, the thrust at any altitude versus uh, by divided by the sea level thrust for different altitudes and also find out how the A e by A t should vary if we are to uh, have something known as adaptive nozzle. So if you look at this plot what it tells you this dotted line here is for a nozzle that is adapted at sea level. If we use the same nozzle to fly to different altitudes then this is the thrust that one can get. If we have a nozzle that is adapted at each and every altitude, okay, what we mean by adapted nozzle is when P e is equal to P a or when the flow is optimally expanded through the nozzle, then we call it an adaptive nozzle. If it is adapted to every altitude then this is the thrust by sea level thrust. So you can see that uh, the thrust delivered by this is far superior to the thrust delivered by a nozzle that is adapted at sea level because 
it this one accounts for uh, the increase in area ratio that needs to be had because the ambient pressure is dropping and if you look at uh, what we need to pay or how do we account for it in terms of area ratio for an adaptive nozzle this will go like this. Notice that beyond some altitude the increase is very very steep okay. Uh, obviously, we cannot uh, have a nozzle that is uh, expire, I mean that is also increasing its area ratio as the vehicle moves up that would be very very difficult. So, let us look at if there are other ways of getting to this or if not improving this in some sense so that we get as close to the adaptive nozzle as possible okay. But we always have said this that when P e is equal to P a right we get the best performance that is when the nozzle is optimally expanded when the flow in the nozzle is we get the highest thrust is what we have said. Let us look at how that is possible. If you look at the thrust equation, the thrust equation that we have is F is equal to m dot u e plus a e right. This is our thrust equation and if you look at it, we are saying when this term goes to 0 we get a best performance. From this equation it looks like if we throw out a term that is causing a positive addition to it, it is still giving us a better performance. This looks a little paradoxical to start with. Let us look at how this happens okay, how when P e is equal to P a we get the best performance. Now there are two approaches to do it, one is you know you have studied in your uh, earlier classes that uh, if you differentiate and show that the derivative is 0 then it will be a maxima or a minima and if it has to be a maxima then the derivative second derivative has to be negative that is one approach and we will also look at whether we can explain the same physically okay. Now uh, firstly in addition to the thrust equation we know that the momentum equation in uh, one dimension is d p by rho plus u d u is equal to 0. Now, let us multiply this equation by rho a okay, and we will get you will get a d p plus rho u a okay fine. Now, we know that for this to be a maxima or a minima the derivative should go to 0. So, let us take the derivative of uh, the thrust. So, we will get d f is equal to u e d m dot plus m dot p e minus p a into 
DAE plus taking the derivative of the terms inside AE DPE minus AE DPE fine. Now in this equation there are certain things that are constant that are if you look at uh, doing this derivative we need to hold P A constant right and the mass flow rate through the nozzle constant right. So, for m dot and P A constant then what happens to these terms this goes to 0 and this goes to 0. So, we will be left with uh, 3 terms here right. Now, let us rearrange this a little differently and see what we can do. So, I will get d f is equal to plus A E D P E ok. Now, if you notice we had multiplied the momentum equation with rho into A and got this expression. Now, if we take this for the exit plane right I can rewrite this as A E D P E plus rho u A is nothing but mass flow rate right. So, I will get ok. Now, if you notice the first two terms of the <coughs> derivative of thrust has this which means these two will go to 0. So, we will be left with d f is equal to for it to be a maxima or a minima d f has to go to 0 and that is possible when only p e is equal to p a so d f goes to 0 now let us look at what happens to the second derivative right. So, we will take d square f is equal to We had already said that P A is constant and therefore, this term goes to 0. So, we will be left with only 2 terms right. Now, if you look at these 2 terms for P E equal to P A the, the first term will go to 0. We are looking at what happens to the sin of d square f when P E is equal to P A right. So, at p is equal to p a this term goes to 0 ok. So, we will be left with only this term. Now, let us examine what is the sign of this term. <coughs> 
how is the in the supersonic portion of the nozzle convergent divergent nozzle what is dae whether it is positive or negative in the supersonic portion that is in the divergent portion the area is always increasing right so it's positive and if you look at what happens to pressure in the nozzle it is decreasing so the derivative will be negative so you have one positive term and one negative term the product will always be negative and therefore this is a maxima so we have a maxima at p is equal to pa now let's try to understand this physically also if you look at the uh, convergent divergent nozzle let's say you have a rocket motor and then you have a convergent divergent nozzle you all know in aerodynamics that you can get the lift of an airfoil by integrating the pressure over the entire surface similarly you can get the thrust uh, by integrating the pressure over the entire surface okay so if you do that if you look at this all this portion to the left of this portion is immaterial to us because uh, that will not change with change in ambient pressure okay or change in exit pressure fine upstream of this will not have any bearing and also if you look at uh, these two surfaces they anyway cancel each other out we are only looking for thrust in this direction right we are looking for thrust in this direction so it is good for us to only consider the divergent portion now if you look at the divergent portion alone i'll take one section of the nozzle now on the inside what is happening to pressure as you move from the throat to the exit plane pressure is decreasing now let's take the case where the ambient pressure is equal to the exit pressure okay so then this is the exit pressure so it is constant on the other side throughout the so for pe equal to pa okay now if you look at this the thrust net thrust if you look at what is happening here this will produce a force in this direction right and you will have a component of the same in the direction that we want the other component will get cancelled each other out because of symmetry so we are only interested in one component that is in the uh, x direction right so we are only interested in this component now let's say we add a little more nozzle what happens some extra portion of the nozzle such that if you add an extra portion what happens to the flow inside the pressure will drop even further right and you will get a situation wherein the inside pressure is lower than the outside pressure so in this very small portion you will have a component of force in this direction which will lead to something like this 
if you resolve it in these two directions. So, this is adding to a negative thrust you would not want that. So, therefore, uh, let us take this portion out and get back our earlier figure wherein we had P is equal to P A. Now, let us say the exit pressure is more than the ambient pressure right. Then what will happen? We need to take out some portion of the nozzle. What we have essentially done is we have taken out a portion which was giving us net positive thrust, but we have taken that out. So, therefore, we will get a reduced thrust. So, it works out that uh, physically when P e is equal to P A only we will get the best thrust. If you look at uh, the thrust equation here right, uh, this term is increasing when as you reduce pressure, the velocity is keeps on increasing as you reduce the pressure and when P e is equal to P A you will have uh, this portion as the maxima and that is why you are able to get the highest thrust when P e is equal to P A. Okay. Now, let us look back at uh, some gas dynamics and try and understand what happens in the uh, supersonic nozzle. So, now we know that in our thrust equation F is equal to m dot u e okay. if P e is equal to P a then the flow is expanded optimally expanded and give, gives us the maximum thrust when P e is greater than P a what is uh, this case? This is a case when it is under expanded that is there was scope for this to expand up to P A, but we have left it some portion unutilized okay. and when P E is less than P A it is over expanded flow. Here we have taken it more than or lower than P A and therefore, it is over expanded. Okay. So, now let us look at what happens uh, inside the uh, C D nozzle when all these three conditions take place. I mean whether what will happen to the flow as we look at it when these things happen. Okay. So, to do that let us look at a convergent divergent nozzle, I will only take one half of it. Okay. This up to this is the reservoir, this is the throat and this is the supersonic portion. 
we know from gas dynamics that if we have a reservoir pressure PC then depending on what is the ambient pressure outside we have derived that in the class that for gamma is equal to 1.2 this ratio should be around 1.7 for the nose throat to be choked. Let us say if the ambient pressure is somewhere here right ambient pressure and the uh, pressure inside is the same okay then what will happen there is no flow right. So, there will be no flow and pressure is constant throughout. Now, let us keep reducing this uh, pressure on the outside okay. So, then there will be flow okay and if the fluid is viscous then we will not recover the actual pressure but otherwise we will recover the pressure okay and if we still keep uh, reducing it further once it reaches a critical uh, pressure the ratio here and then it will expand and it will reach mark number 1 m is equal to 1 at the throat okay. And then if the pressure on the outside is still lower it will expand further let us say this is the point where okay. Now there could be two solutions possible when P A is uh, there if you after you have reduced the P A if you increase it further it will let us see what happens to the uh, flow in the nozzle. Now we have gone to a case wherein P E is equal to P A and the flow is optimally expanded. Now let us say if we increase the pressure in this direction what happens as we increase all that the flow knows is as soon you are confining it within the nozzle here right. So it till it is in the nozzle it cannot experience what is the outside pressure and also this flow remember is supersonic. So, it does not have anything it does not know what is going to come ahead right. So, as long as you confine it it will not feel what is the outside pressure but the moment you release it outside it knows that it has to equilibrate with the surrounding fl fluid. So, it will try to process itself either through shocks or expansion fans okay and then equilibrate with the surroundings. If the pressure here is uh, slightly greater than P A let us say at this point it will go through this and it will process itself through a series of oblique shocks and expansion fans okay and then uh, it will equilibrate over some length with the external pressure. Okay. Let us say we increase the pressure beyond this there is a point at which the fluid cannot process itself through these oblique shocks outside and you will get a oblique shock inside and the flow will separate and therefore you will get something like this further still you will get a normal shock and after that the flow will be subsonic and therefore you will get a pressure recovery right. Now let us look at what happens if we go below this okay. If we go below this the flow is going to be the same up to this point okay and then it knows that the outside pressure is much lower than the exit pressure so it will expand further okay and then equilibrate with the surrounding fluid so it will process itself through a series of expansion fans and uh, these will get reflected and we'll see that here if you see this case here 
the first figure this is when p e is greater than p a. So, therefore, you will have expansion fans right and the flow will process itself through these expansion fans. These expansion fans when it hits the jet boundary will get reflected as compression waves. Okay. These are uh, Mach waves and they will get reflected as compression waves which will again get reflected from the free jet boundary as expansion fan. So, it will go through series of expansion fans and compression waves and process itself and finally, it will equilibrate with the surrounding pressure. Now, if you have a case wherein P e is less than P a, then it knows that it has to process itself through a oblique shock. So, you will have an oblique shock first and then this oblique shock when it hits the free jet boundary gets reflected as a expansion fan and the same here on the other side oblique shock gets reflected as an expansion fan and then these expansion fans uh, will get reflected as Mach waves. So, it will process itself through a series of this till it equilibrates with the ambient pressure. Okay. Now, how does this affect our thrust equation and what is its role is what we have to see. Now, if you look at this figure here, what you see plotted on the x axis is A e by A t and on the y axis it is C f okay. and uh, this is plotted for uh, P c by P a different values of P c by P a that is seen to increase in this direction and finally, it reaches infinity okay. and the dotted line here that you see is the locus of all these maximas that you have here for each A e by A t. So, if you connect them you will get this line. This is actually the line if you say that an optimal uh, that an adaptive nozzle will have the C f variation if you have an adaptive nozzle that is if you continuously keep on increasing the A e by A t an adaptive nozzle will give this kind of C f profile. Okay. Is that clear? If you have an adaptive nozzle that is uh, allowing the flow to be expanded optimally at each and every altitude, then the C f of that will be something like this. But let us say you have a nozzle that has a particular area ratio. Let us say you have a nozzle that has an area ratio of 5. Then what happens to the C f? Uh, we look at 5 is somewhere here right. So, if you look at having only a ra area ratio of 5 then depending on P c by P a, P a keeps on decreasing as you increase in altitude. P c let us say we hold it constant. So, the what happens to this ratio? This increases. So, you will uh, go from uh, smaller values to larger values and then uh, there is a point uh, at which it will be optimally expanded and then beyond which it will also drop. Right? Now, there is if you look at this line here this dotted line here beyond this the flow uh, will separate okay, and you will have a recirculation zone in the expand uh, in the uh, supersonic portion of the nozzle right and the flow will separate here. Okay. So, if we want to have a uh, single stage to orbit vehicle it is extremely difficult to design this it will not function optimally because what will happen is if you look at uh, having a single nozzle right. Let us say you have a nozzle uh, wherein which, which gives optimally expanded flow at uh, sea level. Then if you continue to use it at higher altitudes it will perform badly 
as we go in altitude compared to an adaptive nozzle right. So, we are losing out on some thrust that we could have probably got, but let us say we do the other thing we take the uh, nozzle that is expanded at some altitude and try to use it from ground level to higher altitudes. What happens is beyond a point uh, the flow will separate and you will get to this kind of situation. So, either ways it is very difficult to have this which is why having a single stage to orbit is very difficult and uh, also if you look at rockets as soon as you expel out some propellant the structure is a waste right. The structure is not uh, useful enough. So, therefore, if you multi stage it okay, then at each stage you can have uh, the optimally expanded flow for some altitude and therefore, you will get a uh, much better benefit right. We will not probably be able to do if you looked at If we look back at uh, the adaptive nozzle figure that is altitude We had seen that if we use a nozzle that is adapted at sea level and if we use it for higher altitudes also this would be some performance and if we were to use a continuously adapted nozzle then the performance was superior right. If we do multi staging we will probably get uh, firstly, it will be adapted at sea level let us say and you go to some altitude then you make sure that it is adapted at that point. So, it will probably go like this and again if you separate that stage it will go in this fashion. So, we in a sense we are trying to do the adaptive nozzle in stages ok that is what we do in multi staging. Also uh, if you look at uh, PSLV right PSLV has uh, 6 strap on motors ok. They do not switch on all the 6 of them uh, at ground level. They will switch on 4 of them in the ground level and 2 of them at higher altitude. The reason being if you switch it on at a higher altitude then you can have the nozzle adapted to a higher altitude and therefore, it will perform better ok. So, that is in some sense uh, some kind of multi staging or this thing that is done in PSL ok. So, such things are possible in order to get a slightly better performance. Now, there are also other issues that uh, uh, sometimes if you use uh, the nozzle wherein the flow is under expanded you will get into some kind of other difficult situations I will explain that with a small figure here. <coughs> 
firstly consider a booster or first stage then a second stage motor and then a third stage motor ok. What would you use for a booster? What kind of area ratios would you want to use for a booster? Is it going to be very large or is it going to be smaller number? Smaller. So, you will typically use something like 6 to 8. Let us take the case where it is 6 and for the second stage you will lose a larger area ratio and then also for the third stage you will lose use a still larger area ratio. If you take the nozzle for this during flight the pressure if it does not go to a very high altitude that is the maximum altitude is something like 5 kilometers the nozzle flow nozzle will flow full with slight under expansion right and the ISP will be of the order of 2670 this is in uh, or I will put it as 267 this is in seconds ok. Now if you test it at sea level conditions remember whenever we want to send a, a rocket up we need to also test it in a static test facility right. So, if we test it in a sea level static test facility uh, this nozzle would probably be flowing full if you test it in sea level conditions there is not going to be too much of a variation here. and you will probably get similar values for ISP. Now, if you look at the second stage it has a fairly large area ratio and the flow will be under expanded here. Here again the altitude is something like 24 kilometers and the ISP that you get will be something like 312 seconds. So, the flow is here under expanded ok. What happens if you use this nozzle at sea level conditions? it is in such a way that uh, it is optimally expanded at some higher altitude. Now, if you use the same nozzle at sea level conditions in a static thrust what kind of ISP will you get? Lesser because if you look uh, from the graph the CF will reduce because there will be uh, probably 
flow separation that takes place and the nozzle might not flow full right. So therefore you are probably going to get something like ISP of 254 seconds okay and if you use a third stage uh, motor wherein it is expanded for something like 100 kilometers altitude and it gives something like 334 seconds right then the flow beyond this will expand further right so it is under expanded again and if you use this at a sea level condition probably you are going to have a normal shock sitting somewhere in the uh, supersonic portion of the nozzle and uh, you might get a very low ISP because the flow beyond the supersonic uh, after the shock will be after the shock the flow will be subsonic and therefore probably you might end up getting a very low ISP here okay. So one of the problems is if you are looking at this scenario wherein the flow expands even further you should be careful to avoid having any instrumentation in this region because at a higher altitude the flow might turn back and uh, you know you might have hot gases impinging on this equipment which it might not be able to withstand. So therefore it is either better to have some insulation there so as to prevent the heat heating of these equipment okay. Now till now we have looked at an analysis wherein we had only looked at uh, quasi one dimensional flow we had assumed uh, isent the flow to be isentropic then we had also assumed the flow to be an ideal gas and then uh, all the parameters that is the CP thermal conductivity viscosity whatever uh, inviscid flow so with there is no viscosity uh, the CP does not change with uh, uh, flow in the nozzle right we had assumed that uh, CP is constant and thermodynamic properties are also constant. In the next class let us look at how changes in the real world will affect whatever we had derived. Uh, in most cases in engineering uh, it would be nice if we can get a closed form solution that is if, if you have a real situation and if we can get the entire solution for that particular situation. Otherwise uh, the next best thing that we can do is let us say we can get the bounds for it right. If you have an upper bound and a lower bound and if you say the solution might be somewhere in between these two that is also good for us because then we are we have some uh, we know it is going to be within these two values. So that is what we are going to do in, in the case of uh, nozzle flow which we will discuss in the next class. Thank you. Oh,